Hello, and welcome to UX Leadership by Design. I'm your host, Mark Baldino. I'm also the co-founder of Fuzzy Math. Fuzzy Math is the user experience design consultancy that brings consumer-grade UX to business applications for B2B and enterprise tools. Today, I speak with Pablo Stanley, an artist, uh, a title he only recently became comfortable calling himself. Um, and we get into the trials and tribulations uh, and triumphs of leading creatives, but especially what it means and what it takes for creatives to lead other creatives. And of course, some of the areas of joy that can only uh, come from leading a creative team. Um, we start the conversation uh, discussing his formative years he spent in a gang as their quote, create, <laughs> creative department, which was AKA uh, the graffiti artist. And then into his journey of becoming a creative director and now is the CEO and founder of multiple companies, including Musho and Lumi, uh, both of which are AI tools aimed at helping people unlock their creative potential. Um, so of course we get into AI and creativity. Uh, should designers be afraid, excited, a bit of both? Um, but Pablo is, as he likes to say, a techno optimist. Um, and while we discuss both sides of these equations, he really sees a bright future ahead of us. Um, we cover a lot. Uh, it's a great conversation. Pablo is part storyteller and, and, and part philosopher. Um, so I think you're going to enjoy it. And uh, thanks as always for listening. Pablo, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me, Mark, man. No, thank so you cool. for uh, thank you for joining me. We've had some pre conversations, and they've been they've been a good laugh. Uh, and part of the podcast <laughs> is, as a guest said to me last year, this should be fun, right? We should have a good time. So I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Hopefully, it's enjoyable for you and and the audience. Um, you are up to or have been up to a lot in reading your bio. Can you give uh, can you give the audience a little bit of your background? Uh, how far do you want to go? I guess uh, <laughs> we could go. Yeah, there's, you're right. There's been a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, well, um, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a designer. Uh, I, I can say that I'm. I think I'm an artist that found his way into design stuff because that's I very. <laughs> Very soon realized that being an artist was not going to make me make me a living, right. <laughs> you know. So I was like, ah, oh, I need to do something different. Uh, so uh, yeah, I've been doing design for a very long time, man, and uh, uh, been from. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I we can go back to when I was a teenager and I used to do graffiti. Like I consider that like part of my design yeah, <laughs> adventure, design you know? career for sure. Yeah, I was a what creative got you director. Into doing graffiti? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 I mean, back in those days, it was like the graffiti was part of the. Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm from the hoods in uh, Mexicali, like a little town in, in a border town, and back in those days, there was no internet or anything. So, what do you do if you are a teenager in those not so great neighborhoods? You join a band, uh, like a gang. <laughs> okay. So, like, hey, we had a gang, and like, uh, I don't know. Part of our uh, there was the creative department <laughs> in the gang. Let's say that, and I was. Uh, you were on the creative. I was ahead. Of, I, I was ahead of the creative department, the creative director of our gang, <laughs> and like graffiti was part of that thing, you know. Other than going and being angry at other gangs. Which we don't know. I, I I still don't understand the whole point. Is like, oh, you live in a different neighborhood. I hate you now. It's so, it was so dumb. <laughs> but uh, but uh, what really attracted me was like, well, I suppose the sense of community because like it, you, those who you grow up with uh, that are like live close to you. Um, there was no internet, so those were the people that you knew, you know. So hey, we formed more gang, and but for some reason. All our neighborhoods were the enemy. <laughs> so dumb. It's such a, such a, I don't know, uh, uh, like old school mentality. But uh, yeah. anyway, yeah. Uh, ever since then, I, I've been, uh, I've been trying to just put my creative side uh, to work. <laughs> what were you like an artist before you started doing graffiti, or was that your first like artistic outlet? Oh, I mean, like, uh, I, I suppose, like, I, I suppose we all 
drew when we were kids, you know, <laughs> well, did all doodles and we're like, oh, paint and, and do stuff. I just never stopped. <laughs> Usually they, there's someone to tell, that tells you, stop, stop doing that. Now do serious things like math and English. <laughs> so uh, I suppose like nobody said, you should stop, Pablo. <laughs> you should stop doodling. So, yeah, like it, I, I suppose like a lot of artists, that just what happened that nobody or somehow they just like never stop uh, doing that creative stuff that we're, we all are born with and we're all born with the uh, the need to express ourselves with stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I mean, um, I'm at that age where I'm, when I'm okay calling myself an artist, like I, it's, it's been a struggle for forever because I've always said like, oh no, I'm not an artist, you know? No, no, no. Artists are real artists. Like, I don't know, like the whole thing where you, you always like compare yourself to others and, you see others that are great artists and you're like, those are the real artists, you know? So only until now, I'm like, no, maybe you are an artist, Pablo, and it's okay to be an artist. Maybe uh, uh, the standards are lower to become an artist. <laughs> no, may maybe you're, uh, I don't want to speak for you, maybe you're more comfortable. You feel less like an imposter these days. I mean, you've made it a career. How did you, you mentioned the transition of no one's going to maybe pay me to be a, to be an artist. Like, how did, what was your transition from it being an outlet as a teen in a border town to it's kind of like you have professional aspirations that you, you want to make a career out of this. Was that a gradual transition or did you really just set your mind to it one day? I, did, I don't know. Like, a, it's, it, it's, is the cliche of the artist that doesn't think about those things? I am totally that cliche. I, I really don't think about like, oh, how how am I going to monetize this? <laughs> like I never I my mind doesn't go to that. And it should. And it I like there's some switch that I need to turn on in my head to be able to turn on the capitalist and <laughs> the cap the artist capitalist that like, like things of like, oh, let's let's put a value to this. It's just like yeah. my mind has never been able to think that way. But uh, on design, I just like uh, it's it's. I've been fortunate. I I think we're we're all been very fortunate. Just like whoever is like out there who's a designer, uh, I I'm 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 willing to bet that those who choose that path, that career, is because they're well, there's a little bit of passion towards that, and there's there's also like kind of a, a little bit of edge and a little bit of coolness uh of being a designer so hey i don't know like i just it's, it's been something that it just becomes natural because i i enjoy it and i like it and i'm like uh doodling and putting things together and make sense out of stuff <laughs> uh so it it's never been like a really uh like a uh, like consciously thinking about how this will become a career it has never been like that in my head and and i don't know like i suppose that's also why um, when you have that mentality maybe you allow yourself to do like more stupid stuff and which stupid stuff that suddenly becomes less stupid and more real <laughs> yeah it's the it's the freedom you granted yourself or you were able to grant to sort of explore and maybe not have a uh, financial component to it. Yeah. But you s obviously took it seriously. I mean, you've founded a number of companies. You're not just an artist or a creative, you lead groups of human beings and you're designing, yeah. building tools like that all gradual over time. It's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm, uh, I'm going to, I'm now going to go from being an artist to a leader or like, what was that transition like for you? I, I mean, it just became natural too. I like uh, right now. By the way, I, I don't know if you can see, but uh, this is not my usual place. I'm actually at my parents' house, okay. uh, and, and it's like weird paintings, my mom. Uh, but <laughs> mm, I'm I'm here in and I'm back in my border town. I I don't live here anymore, but I'm I'm here back to play with an a band that I used to play when I was a teenager. We still play. It's a punk rock band uh, that we have been playing ever since we were teenagers. And we're, now we're old and 
fat. <laughs> but we're still playing and we still fight the fun. Uh, but I, I was the other day I was like talking to one of my bandmates and I told him, dude, like we weren't aware of this, but we were 16, 17 and we're already doing, we're already preparing ourselves for the world, you know, because it was like different minds with different musical tastes getting together to do music, you know, to do music together, being in sync, like to be in a band and like, like every weekend we had a show, you know, and to be ready for the show. Well, you had to rehearse and you had to rehearse like almost daily, you know, and you had to like get in there and create, like I, I I'll be the one uh, they would create the, the songs and all that stuff. So I'll have to come in and convince the other guys, hey, this is how it is, you know, and this is how the song should be. Be open to feedback and then say, oh, your feedback sucks. Like, no, do it my way. <laughs> Even then, uh, you know, like it, it, I, I wasn't planning on, oh, I'm going to create a band now to prepare myself for being a leader in the future. You know, it's just like, hey, I just right. wanted to make a band, <laughs> you know. Right. But but like looking back, we, I was I was telling my friend, dude, that that was preparing us for a lot of stuff that you live as an adult. You know, that as an adult, you have to deal with other uh, teammates, you know, and, and here there were bandmates and we're all like different and we have different opinions and different tastes, but we all have to like, even when all those differences exist, like a, have some kind of Venn diagram between our ideas and just like pull uh, forward and push forward and just like create something. And it was like, dude, like we didn't realize that, but that prepares for a lot of stuff in the future that now we apply just like in our jobs and professional stuff and everything. Yeah. But uh, we were doing it then. Like uh, we're doing a lot of the things that we're already also doing. That it's just, just like push a product, have a deadline. And the deadline was the gig that was like that Friday. And sometimes same Friday, we had like three gigs that we had to go to. <laughs> so it was like preparing a lot and, and just like rehearsing and all that stuff. I don't know. It's uh, uh, like, and, and, and I'm pretty sure that those are things that, uh, uh, exist maybe not just in a band but it also exists like in sports or yeah. uh, now kids like play a lot in uh, video games and they get together and I see my nephew that that's all he does <laughs> he's always getting his headphones and just playing Roblox and, <laughs> but it's like oh what are you doing there man and it's like oh no he starts telling me like hey well I'm um, I'm getting together with my friends and we're like uh, going into tournaments and stuff. It's like, oh, cool, man! Like uh, you're you're doing stuff that I used to do too. You know that uh, that it's preparing me to the world to deal with other human beings. <laughs> yeah. uh, and so, uh, yeah, yeah. I suppose like uh, what I'm trying to say is like a uh, we sometimes don't realize that a lot of stuff that we're doing is preparing us for other things in our lives and uh, now. Uh, like and, and like being like now I'm a well I have a couple of companies and I I get to be Mr. CEO <laughs> and 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 the whole idea is just like a forming a team and just like other people and creating a culture it's a uh, it's hard you know it's it, it's it's fun but it's hard because like hey, people are different people have their own things and and, and and it's hard to everyone get aligned to with a common goal. And even though we all have our lives and our opinions and our visions and our passions and our own things, we all have to come together as a team and bring whatever makes sense of our own things and put it together with the rest of them and and build something together. And that is a, I don't know, I'm... Um, I, I I don't know. I'm just being lucky, man, that I just found really nice people, really cool people and talented people that uh that have had uh that I somehow convinced them to come <laughs> do Join stuff them. with me. <laughs> yeah. Well that's great. I mean it's it I think it is an interesting sort of connection to what you're doing as a as a teenager and now being putting on the sort of CEO hat and 
if I'm reading between the lines, you're a little bit of the CEO of the band, at least in terms of like you were kind of directing some things. And I don't know if that's yeah. how it works. I've never been in a band, but like, what is the, what are the unique like benefits or challenges of, of doing that with a group of creatives versus let's say, I don't know, not non-creative people, but I mean, people who are artists consider themselves artists, take that seriously. Like what are some of the challenges, but also some of the triumphs of, of leading a team of creatives? Uh, I mean, uh, when you're a creative, uh, there's a lot of hand hands-on work. Like a, when you're a designer, you're a, I don't know, maybe a painter. I'm, let's call, talk about designers specifically, or maybe even uh, uh, coders, or like developers. And is like you you value your yourself sometimes uh, with the amount of pixels you push, you know, mm -hmm. and the amount of uh, screens you build and the prototypes and the connections you make and the presentations you make. So it's uh, suddenly your, well, your value comes from all the craft that you put in and, and all those things you put out there. And suddenly when you are on more on, on the manager side, well, you're doing way less than, from that, you know? And so you might feel lost because, uh, you uh, as a creative well you were creating before and now you you're not creating you're more like uh allowing others to create and and you are uh, uh, pushing others to do the stuff that that you know that you could do <laughs> you know that you could just like open the file and just do it yourself and maybe even quicker and and sometimes even better you know uh, but that's because the, these other people are like going through that process too to learn all those things that you have also it took you some time to also learn, and so the challenges are like a like like being hands off, you know. Like that's that's one of the main challenges that I found. And I, for example, recently, man, I we've been working on a new UI stuff on on a product that we're building, and I will find myself just getting in the Figma file and just like doing it myself, and. Right. But I'll feel guilty of doing it because, like, there's designers who are supposed to do that, and, and my my job should not be there, build it for them. It should be just well guiding them so they can just build it, and and also all my I don't want the designers to just like follow exactly what I tell them to do. Sometimes I do. So it's like just do what I want you to do. <laughs> right. Don't, right. Doesn't don't feel very it doesn't feel very creative, does it? Just do what I want you to do. <laughs> I know. It's I'm just like, stand over your shoulder me. here, or I'm gonna follow you around in Figma and no, no, yeah. no, no, do that, do that, do that. Yeah, yeah no, that no, doesn't no. feel very creative. Which creates a little bit of attention, right? You want yeah. to foster creativity on the team, but it's like you're trying to also kind of direct them as well. Yeah, there's like this kind of uh, uh balance between what is uh like micromanaging and guidance, you know, where it's like you sometimes you it's it's easier to just tell them, don't do that. It's it's a mistake. Don't even try it. And I'll explain to you later. We have to move on. We have a deadline. We have to like be quick, you know? And uh, for for people to uh, and if you do that, well, you might be able to move faster, you know? But also people might resent you for, for you just telling them that and not allowing them to make those mistakes or or and, and it might not be a mistake. Maybe it's just my bias that sometimes it didn't work. Maybe one time it didn't work and now it will never work, you know? Now I'm, my, my head is just stuck with that idea. So I'm not allowing, if you get in, and you start putting those kinds of things, you're, you're not allowing them to explore new things, discover new ideas, and also maybe also make that mistake that you you made back then, you know? So I think it's a, it's a little bit of that, it's just like a, a knowing when to guide and when to just tell them, hey, that's not the right path, uh, this is why, so, don't try it. <laughs> Don't right. do it. Do it this way, and and just trust me, and and, and you'll see you'll see why later. Uh, maybe it's not so obvious right now. So, it, and and to do that, you have to also build that the trust. You know, like uh, on the on the other side, if 
if if they don't see you, if they don't respect you, <laughs> if you don't respect your work, yeah. uh, you're gonna be like, ah, Paula, shut up. <laughs> so it, for for that, you have to well, as a leader, like as cliche as it sounds, like you have to lead by example sometimes too, and just like do it yourself, be there, and and get your hands dirty a little bit so they can see that you know what you're talking about you know how to use the tool too you know yeah, uh yeah. you know how to push the pixels but uh but it's like hey all of that stuff all of that crap i'm leaving that to you and just trust me more on the guidance and more on the uh, on the vision so right that is that is one thing the micromanaging they have being hands off um uh, I mean, and there's other things that are just like regular manager stuff, but it's not exactly to, for creatives, but uh, 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 which I, I suppose, no, hold on. It, it might actually be a little bit for, uh, regarding creatives because like I, I it, it's, it's a little controversial, but I, I, I actually, I, I kind of promote work-life uh integration and not so much about separation not so much about balance it's like hey what what do you want to bring from from your life from your hobbies from your interest into work you know and and it's like hey that way work feels less uh of work and feels more like something that is that is yours too and that is that is based on your interest and your ideas too and and that applies to creatives because they well uh creatives they might have their own interests they might have their own new techniques or new technologies that they're learning and they might sometimes you just need an excuse to learn more you know and it's like hey well bring that here and let's experiment here at work and, and do that stuff but that is uh that is promoting something that is like usually the opposite of what they tell you to promote hey you want to have a balance you want to have a separation between work and life and And for me, sometimes for, for creatives, it's actually cool to to be like, eh, the lines are a little bit blurry and it's okay that they're blurry. Uh, and and so it's okay that some of this stuff feels personal and 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 make it personal and just convince us and, and show that passion that you have for something. And yeah. we're all going to follow you on that passion because uh, if something is interesting to you and that feels close to you, we're all going to want to get in on board and just like follow you with, on that thing that is interesting to you. So I, that is one thing that I also, uh, that I think I, I, we, we try to promote where it's like, a, uh, whenever it makes sense, it's not like a, a suddenly like your work is your life. It's not like that. It's more like a right. promoting more like a, there, the lines can be blurring. That's okay. Yeah. Bring, um, bring your kind of more along yeah. lines of kind of bringing your full self to what you're doing and some of your passion versus, Hey, if you're going to be part of this initiative, you know, you're going to work whatever, 80 hours a week. It's not, that's, I think when people hear work-life balance, they're like, wait, 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 I'm, I'm uh, that to me says something that <laughs> doesn't sound like a lot of fun. And what you're advocating for is like trying to leave parts of you behind in your work. And if you can bring things you're passionate about and integrate it into your creative process, like that's, probably going to produce a better result, probably more traction yeah, uh, and communication and, you know, decision, make alignment on your team. For everyone, right? Whereas yeah. like uh, for the company is better because like, hey, well, we have uh, more mo motivated employees, you know, they're, they're working on something that they like doing. Uh, so as a cold-blooded capitalist, oh, well, Uh, more efficient employees, good, <laughs> you right, know. Right, 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 uh, right. But also, <laughs> what was that? No, I said right. Yeah, on. it's like oh well, more motivated employees means more efficient, and that's good. Uh, but also, uh, I think for well, for the employee, for the 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 one crafting the stuff, well, they feel more motivated and feel like it's. Like, I don't know, it suddenly work feels less like work and it feels more like a uh, fun, you know. Yeah. So we, we try to do that. It Like sometimes it's not possible because we just have a deadline. We have to do it. Uh, <laughs> we have to do it if we don't like it and we just have to push it. 
uh but uh hey we we try to do that you know and i uh, and yeah it's just like a a lot of different things that you start realizing as you go and uh when you start wearing the manager hat uh and i i think uh, another thing that maybe we uh well designers creatives or just uh, we i think we crave control like i mean i don't i think uh, people don't remember this but uh back figma took a while for for designers to accept it because of the whole idea of sharing the file 100%. that 100%. others like people don't don't forget this but it it took a while for figma to be accepted by the design community because for a very long time we liked the idea of working isolated that of working at a place where i have control and don't look at it until it's perfect you know it, it, it's it's not ready there it's it's, it's 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 not finished so please don't open it you know so it, and I mean, I see, I, I, I know that there are some designers that still do that where they will have their private file <laughs> where they do the stuff there. No one is invited and they will only copy paste the stuff <laughs> once it's ready to the Figma file yes. that everybody's invited to, <laughs> which is like so insane. But uh, I, there's a little bit of that too, right? Where you want to have that perfection and control and, and I don't know, there's some kind of uh, culture of, uh, making mistakes and by if you make mistakes well there's shame on that and well nobody likes shame right so i think there's a little bit of that i don't want people seeing something that is unfinished because then they're going to judge my unfinished pixels and if uh, my pixels are unfinished then my value is is less or something uh, yep. so uh like when you are on the leadership role where you want to bring people together you know you you don't want those kind of uh silos to happen that's number one and you don't want that isolation to happen you want to people to collaborate uh and so you have to fight that that part and that part that is maybe not on your team that maybe it's just on you too that even you when you make decisions and stuff and instead of uh uh, uh, uh trying to put in those des decisions or that strategy, that thing that is like brewing in your head, put in, in on the table so we can discuss it. You only present it until you think it's ready, you know, which is al almost like I, I will only present you the, the design file when it's ready. It's a little bit like that also when you have, I let me think about this plan and I will present it once it's ready. And it's, you're, I don't know, it's, uh, you're, suddenly decisions get centralized where you create a bottleneck because like hey, people are waiting for you to decide what to do instead of putting it on the table it's like this is what i'm thinking what do you guys think <laughs> maybe i'm dumb you know uh and so that that is that is one problem that can cause like that i seen myself uh, get into that trap uh i seen myself get into the trap of uh uh, uh, centralizing decisions where because of that control that sometimes I crave where you should actually let others to contribute on what they what they want to contribute, you know, and just like allow them to make the decisions that they they will potentially know better what to do because they know the context, they're, they're right there with the problem, they live it daily. So for them, it's they will potentially have a better understanding of what to do. So you, you have to give that uh, autonomy to people. You have to give that authority too to say like, hey, you have the authority to make decisions and feel confident. And, and if you make a mistake, well, we'll discuss those mistakes. Try to be right. But, <laughs> but if we make a mistake, we'll talk about it later. And that's okay. Don't worry. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, like as a designer coming from that, uh, culture of uh, perfectionism I, I think i still struggle with that where it's like a hey, perfectionism is the enemy uh, perfectionism is a myth and yeah. you, you should allow people to make mistakes you should allow yourself to make mistakes you should, you should allow uh, to collaborate and not crave that control that maybe you had with your 
design file that was hidden in a secret folder that nobody could see. It's not like that. As a leader, you have to share all that stuff. So it's uh, tough though. I mean, like it's, I have a hard time, especially when I feel like I'm responsible for other people on my team and them paying their mortgage and, you know, living the life they want to live. The idea of giving up a lot of control is really, and this isn't from a creative, this is a personality perspective, right? Like it's just hard to do and trust that it's going to work. But I've, I've found, and I've, I think the biggest mistakes I've made as, as a leader is when I, in those moments when I've gripped really, really tightly, tried to control everything, it ended up creating mm -hmm. a bunch of problems and just disaster. Yeah. And it's when I yeah, yeah. step back a little bit, took a breath and let other people handle things and do things, even if we're facing a challenging time from the business or with a challenging client, when I've given mm -hmm. them that uh, space to grow and learn, make mistakes, but also to deliver because I really trust my team. Yeah. Like, it always ends up better, but my personal first inclination is I'm going to grab this as tight as possible and hold on. Yeah. As as I can. It's really hard. Yeah. And, 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 and sometimes it's, it's not a, it's not because you don't trust your team or something. It's because like you, you, you since you feel like it's your responsibility, I have to fix this, you know? Yeah. And, and no, you have to let go. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it is kind of your responsibility, but it's not, it's more your responsibility to allow others to, to solve that problem. Right. Yeah. Uh, what are, what are um like the flip side of this equation? Like, what do you love about or enjoy about leading creatives? Like, what is the, what are some of the triumphs that you've shared with your team that if you weren't, I know you have obviously probably have non, at this point, non-creatives on your team, but specifically speaking about those folks that are creatives, like, what are the, what are the joys of, of that? Uh, by the way, all this time I've been talking about creatives, as in specifically the stereotypical who is creative and who isn't creative, as in like the artists or the designers. Sure. But I, I think uh, on, on our team, at least out of the company, we try to strive for everyone is creative, you know? We, we just yeah. like creative in a different way. Uh, and I, I've seen that actually like uh, developers are, really creative and then yep. it, like you once you start realizing what they're actually doing it's like oh my god how do you get to that anyway just wanted to to say that but uh uh sorry what was the question now and i got well, just, you know sorry. we've been talking about some of the, some of the challenges of leading and maybe going from like where where you were an individual contributor up to a manager to a leader and and uh i always think that's helpful because i think people can resonate with that but like What's the flip side of it? What have been of some of those moments of joy or triumphs in in, in your leadership arc? I I think uh, I mean there are some things that I uh, feel proud of that we have been able to work with. Uh, not as I mean no, number one, I, I love working with my team and I feel just blessed on 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 everything they do and and how committed they are. So uh, it. One thing that you have to learn is to take uh, 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 see their successes as your success too, as as like a as something that you also like contributed to. So their success for me is like a it's really I don't know it's really empowering me empowering to me and just like I feel really proud. So I I have learned to to do that. Uh, so it feels really good because then when people are striving and doing their best, then I don't know. It's really cool to just see people uh, like learn and grow together and do stuff together. But uh, some, some stuff that, that I feel now years later that on this thing that we, these things that we have tried and that now it's like, Hey, yeah, it, this kind of worked. But it's like uh, we, we try to at least have one day, a week where it's like no meetings allowed <laughs> you know like a hey, fridays no meetings are allowed uh sometimes we have to break the rule but uh we try to keep it and and that's uh i don't know like that's that's nice uh, uh also no sorry my puppies no worries barking i don't know what <laughs> a ghost or something uh there's we have no performance reviews <laughs> oh wow like i i've always hated that stuff dude and i mean we 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 do 
I don't know if you can hear the puppy. It's, it's kind Barely. of barking. No worries. Uh, uh, more like a like we promote a uh, people to ask for feedback and but like like being actionate. I, I mean, more proactive and not waiting until the end of the year or until like the second quarter when that happens because that like I don't know like for. It's always been just like very stressful, all that stuff. And it feels like it's forced and you don't really get like actually good results. And it, I don't know. Everyone feels bad from that stuff. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so it's like, I, what, what do you want to do that kind of stuff that like just makes everyone feel bad? Like, right. But promote the idea. I mean, feedback is valuable and just like sure. asking for feedback and, but like ask it. Ask for it right away. Don't wait for it later, you know? So we we promote that uh, instead of waiting for a performance review and just like, hey, just... To... <laughs> and if there's also something that needs to be... There needs to be feedback, just give it. Don't... Also, don't don't hold it, you know? And yeah. So uh, that's, that's another thing that I, I think we tried. And uh, on the flip side, as like, hey, when you create your own team and your own culture, you get to make those kinds of decisions, you know, and, and you get to, to say, this is how we think we should work. The, uh, so that is, uh, that is something that I, I think we, we're, we're all, we all feel really proud of, uh, different little things of how we think that we work a little bit differently. And even, uh, I mean, we were, uh, a, a COVID era company. That's when we started. So, we were forced to to work remotely and and but uh that's that's also that we just something that we have kept it's just like a promoting working from anywhere yeah. um and and just allowing people to even travel you know and just like hey get inspired and go see the world you know and just show show off for the slack threads <laughs> you know and just like comment on the slack threads that are important because like sometimes a lot of discussions happen there but that's it just do your work and that's it you know and so i that's another thing that uh, uh i feel really proud that uh we have been able to to work that way uh there's still a lot of value in just like getting together and yep that's it's so important uh, but also just like, hey, allowing people to not be checking on them and just like, hey, are you doing your work? Uh, just trusting that they, they will do it and from whatever they are. It, it can be challenging with all the time zones, man, because sometimes we have a person in Australia and I feel like it's tough, he man. gets the worst. It's yeah. awful for, for him. Uh, he's uh, uh, It's or afternoons or other people's more that, that because we have also people in Europe. So it's just like for him, it's just really, he, he does a struggle a lot. <laughs> yeah. you got to get uh, your asynchronous collaboration, like kind of yeah. down and, and make sure that there's, there's space for that stuff. It is, it is true, but I like, I mean, obviously love this idea of, of kind of fostering creativity within your, your team. I would personally be remiss <clears throat> if I didn't ask you, about some of the tools you're creating um, because they're uh, AI design tools. And mm. um, I, th I think, and I'd love to hear your take on how they're, uh, uh, what you see AI and sort of unlocking and, and pushing and promoting creativity, because I see a lot of tension in the design community around generative AI tools. And some people embrace it. Some people are terrified of it. Some people are right in the middle like you're in the space, right? And it sounds like you're building tools that are helping that, that are leveraging AI to, to, to help people with creativity. So if you could just talk about the tools and then if that balance makes sense of like where people fall on this spectrum of like love, hate, fear, uh, in terms of AI. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I understand the opposition and I understand the, the, the concerns and the fears. I, I totally see why I, I consider myself more of a, I don't know if that's the right term, but more of a techno optimist or uh, like I see technology with a very optimistic uh, thinking, which sometimes has led us to, uh, I don't know, to some places where we don't want to be as a civilization, I guess. Uh, but we have also dealt 
with technology in a way that a, has kept us alive. Uh, and, 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 and thinking on those doomsday scenarios are, it's, it's almost like not, like ignoring everything we have gone through and ignoring that we have been able to just, we have been able to adapt to everything. So I, 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 there's going to be a turbulent time and, and that turbulent time arrived really quickly, but I, I'm, I'm sure that we will adapt and, and this will be for the better. So, and specifically for creatives and designers, like I, I can see why the concerns were like, oh, my, my craft is obsolete and my, my, nobody's going to need my work. But I don't know, has anyone actually used these things? <laughs> <laughs> like, they're, they're okay. They're, they're good, but they're not, they, they, they don't make a lot of the things that you still need a human, you know, for a lot of these things. And these are more like a, Ways to just unblock yours. I, I I see this like oh suddenly like there's no excuse for me to being creatively blocked. You know, mm -hmm. like this thing can just help me get that uh, creative block out of the way, uh, and overcoming that. And and just like there's no excuse for me to not try a lot of different things <coughs> and see how multiple different things look, and and then from there take a direction that I really like uh, because these things are really good at that, are really good at just like giving you a lot of crappy ideas yeah. <laughs> or like so-so ideas, you know, generic yeah. stuff. And then from there, just like it's, you still need the human who selects the, the, the good stuff. And if anything, we have already been doing this for a while. We the mood boards ex have existed yep. for a long time, and mood boards are that. Like take AI as a like a really quick mood board maker, you know, <laughs> where it's like it creates a lot of same thing. It just puts it in different styles and puts it in different ways for you to choose. And it's like, oh, okay, I like this, I like this, and then you start crafting. And like, for example, I see that uh, like in the development of a product or uh, or anything you have your your strategy when you're thinking of uh, pre-production you know uh, then there's the stage where you're doing the production and then there's that stage where you're doing all the finessing all the little details uh, you're going back and just oh what about this what about this other thing and traditionally without AI I think we have being like the middle part has been taking so much of our time, which, whereas uh, all the production stuff, all the putting the blocks together um, and, and recreating blocks that we, that are already established and patterns that already exist and, and, and just recreating them for the sake of recreating them. And I think uh, AI actually just like makes that part way shorter and that way suddenly we have a lot of time yeah. on the finessing which traditionally usually is since it's the last part is usually the deadline is tomorrow so all the details all the hey did you try it in a different way did you try it like this ah, well push that you know because like we didn't have time for for other ways to do it suddenly we have a lot of time for doing that. And I, I see it that way where it's like, hey, no. Yeah, it's it's doing a lot of the he is getting really good at that middle part. But humans are still needed on the all that finessing. And and that's suddenly we have more time for that. And and now we have even for the strategy, I see that uh yeah, it's really good at that stuff too sometimes. So even on the strategy at least get us started on ideas. And just like ideating, like a, what a product could be, what directions we could take. Uh, I think uh, uh, AI can help us on that stuff. But it's really the human part is on that last part that has usually been really the, the thing that we 
just spend so little time and we wish, we always wish, oh man, if I had, if I had had just one more week, if I had just you know, one more hour, I would have finished this little thing and this little detail, you know? Yeah. Now suddenly we have the time for that. That's that's yeah. how I see it. Um, uh, I know it's an oversimplification of that, but that's uh, suddenly like uh, uh, on, on what we spend our time on has shifted. That's yes. how I see it. Yeah, it's I, yeah. I I like that idea. The first part of like unblocking if we're stuck. Yeah. The other part of that is like there's things in my job I don't love to do that AI is like mm. really good at, and that is a way to un unblock me or unstick me from something. And then yeah. to your last point, that frees me up to do things I'm really good at, or maybe even I enjoy, uh, or are the most valuable in what I'm trying to do. And so it's like when you can kind of flip the equation of no, it's going to free going to give me more time it's going to give me more freedom it's going yeah. to allow me to be more impactful of what i'm doing maybe even allow me to be more creative it's a good kind of flip of um some of the kind of negative connotations that i think gen ai is getting these days yeah it's uh i mean uh, uh, the, the negative uh, comments on this I'm, I'm by the way i i do understand all the comments on image generation on for for example, photographers, illustrators, yep. uh, where they have seen that their uh, work has been used to train uh, some of these models. I totally understand that. And I am, I'm, I mean, a court will have to decide what, what is going to happen with all that because it should, because usually artists are the ones who get screwed always. Yep. 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 <laughs> It'll, on this, it, it's very clear that artists are getting screwed. Uh, and so I, I'm all for models that are trained on all human knowledge. I am like super stoked for it. But it does worry me that uh, all of those who have created all that content that has helped <laughs> these things to be super fast and super good at just like knowing everything, that they're not being compensated. And, and I think, uh, 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 I, I think artists are right on being concerned about these, uh, a lot of these models being trained on their work without their consent. Yeah. I think and that's not for us to decide that ha they'll have to be, I don't know, some, um, in, in a court, um, there has to be some regulation that says what is the right way about this and what is the ethical and, and lawful way of uh, that this should have been done. The thing is that these companies are in a race, you know, to see who is the the one that gathers the most data because the more data you gather, the more data you scrape, the more data you, you grab, the better your models become. And so they... It's typical Silicon Valley behavior, where it's like a don't ask for permission, ask for forgiveness later, yep. which uh, has created this, like now suddenly we realize like, hey, okay, this, this imaging models are really good. Like, how did they become that good? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, yeah. where's all this data coming from? Like, I, like it, it wasn't just, it, well, it, it was obviously with all the knowledge that exists, all the, the stuff that we, our civilization has created. And so, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to knowing what this will, uh, will be decided on all this. I, I feel like we're in that like early 2000s Napster era where yeah. We didn't know what was happening with suddenly we were able to just stream music and, well not even stream just download all the mp3s in the world it's like oh my god <laughs> we're going crazy with all the yep. downloads that we're getting from the internet but uh a a court of law had to decide what was fair you know and and so I, we'll see what is fair uh i I'm going to say something controversial. I, I see it on the other side too. I see the other side where it says like, hey, well, these things are trained on on all the art and all the knowledge that is out there, just as any other human is. Just like when you go and read a book as a human, well, 
a lot of that knowledge will get into your brain and to your brain model. And then suddenly you will speak out and say words that are kind of based on what you just read. Or they're also, maybe you go into a, to a museum or you buy a book from an artist you like and you see that stuff and it gets into your brain and suddenly a lot of that stuff is, we call it inspiration, you know, and that inspiration gets into your brain and your output is inspired. There's a, a lot of that stuff gets into your brain and suddenly you create something new. Yeah. But that that's the claim that I see that I hear from the other side. Well, it's, it's just the same. It's just, these models are just like a brain that is also grabbing stuff and then creating something new inspired by other work. I, 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 I kind of believe that too. I was like, eh, that kind of sounds fair too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I kind of agree too. So, so hey, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, I think um, your uh, techno optimist uh, approach and also pragmatic uh, as well, which, which I appreciate. Um, well, I think uh, it's a good way to wrap up the conversation. And thanks for allowing me to to drag us into into AI because uh, I think your your views on it are are really interesting, and I think the audience is really going to enjoy it. If people want to reach out and and contact you, connect with you, where are the best places for that, Pablo? Oh man, uh, well, we're we're working on a tool called Lumi, so you should you guys should uh, check it out. It's uh, Lumi with double M L U M M I dot AI. And that's just like an, uh, uh, for whoever needs uh, images. Now we're doing illustrations, we're doing music, we're doing a lot of different assets uh, for whoever needs the stuff for their creations. We're, we have AI generated stuff from other artists. So it's kind of cool. So cool. Uh, you should check it out. And, and me, myself, Pablo Stanley. Anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere. Awesome. We will link yeah. to uh, you, to your LinkedIn, and definitely to Lumi so people can check it out. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much for your time and energy and, and the conversation today. Much appreciated. Thank you, Mark. This is this is so nice. And thanks for thoughtful questions. Uh, yeah, that, it's, it's, it's always nice to talk about those things because you, I, I never get, I, I don't know, you build this platform for others to talk about these things because I, I, I work on this stuff. But I don't get to really f philosophize about it too much, you know, and just yeah. like talk about it. So thank you for creating a platform for that. You you are welcome. I love it. This is um these conversations are my my favorite part of my day. So it's been it's been fantastic for me as well, and I know the audience will enjoy it. So thanks again, Pablo. Thank you, man.